you know what? You look kind of happy today. You look like you're having fun. I'm having a great day. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out where the fuck your ram rum ham is. Like, I'm just like really disappointed that I misunderstood. I expected you to open the show and show me this giant ham that you had to eat throughout the entirety of the show. Well, well, first of all, it just shows you don't listen to the show, you know, because because the, the bet the bet was it wasn't it wasn't on the show. It was a tweet. Uh, it was a poll. Okay, touche. So, but we we said we were gonna we're doing a live show in two weeks. I think it's Thursday, November seventh. And the idea, the bit was, I was gonna eat some of this rum ham. On some. The show. Some. Some part of it. Some. And you, I was gonna have you eat some of it as well. I'm not eating any of it. What are you talking about? Did this you know, is all you. I'm gonna drink two margaritas, just like I always do from Velvet inside the Westgate, mm -hmm. my favorite margarita spot. And you're gonna eat an entire. I'm just gonna. I want you to sit there. An entire you don't have to eat anything to hold your mic. You're just gonna have to eat the ham the whole show. Like you're not gonna be able to talk. A 40 minute show. I can't eat an entire ham. Oh, you better eat fast. Because that try. was the bet. Your team got their asses kicked. It yeah. wasn't even close. I know. West Virginia got smoked by K State on Saturday night. So wait, uh, does Neil Brown still have a job? I haven't seen. He's still the coach. Um, I don't know why. I, he's. He can't win. You know, West Virginia, all kidding aside, it's never been like a major program, but it, it was a program where it was tough to go in there at night and get a win. Yeah, like when you guys were in the Big East. We've seen Penn State go in there this season. We've seen Iowa State. And then, of course, we saw Kansas State on Saturday. And all That's three okay. Teams. I'm sure you're going to get your revenge when you tell me the Sharp guys played Kansas plus 10 this weekend or something. No, I have not seen that. I have not seen that. I, I do you want to do – we we played the Bills in the big Survivor Contest in Las Vegas, and we won. I had to use all my reverse jinx powers on that one. Boy, yeah. that looked then, awful. We – Kelly and I, we, we had – we really did consider using the Rams in both. And, I, and I wanted – we talked about using the Redskins. And we talked about the Redskins too. Yeah, but we, but we thought and, – and stop me if, if you don't remember it this way. We both thought the Redskins were going to be the most used team. Yes. Right? And the Redskins, we had already used them in Splash. Kelly and I are in the Splash contest, too. So we'd already used the Redskins in Splash. We couldn't use them there. We'd already used the Bills in Splash. We couldn't use them there either. We were always pretty much set on using the Rams in Splash for us. Correct. So we talked about using the Rams in both because we wanted to save the Bills. We thought the Redskins were going to be the number one pick. The Rams ended up being the number one pick, which shocked me. That that shocked me. We used the Bills. All those teams won. So in the end, it didn't really matter. I mean, it does matter because now we have less bullets in our yeah. arsenal. Because, like, the, right. when are we really going to use the Rams and probably maybe use the Redskins, like, I think Thanksgiving. Let me get my – hold on. I spent a lot of time on our spreadsheet this week. The Redskins don't play on Thanksgiving. Uh, no, the the Sunday. You know how you have to pick Thanksgiving Day and oh, you have to pick Sunday. Sunday. The yeah, they're on Sunday. The uh, which would be week thirteen, the Sunday only. There's a few spots, uh, but the Redskins are a few notches down the list. If we want to say, I think they're known as the football team this season, the Washington football. The commies. So let's turn the page to. Wait, hold on a second. Before we turn the page, what? How did you do this week in the NFL? In the NFL, I did horribly. I went 0 2. Because I do a, you know, I do a show with our friend Sam Panyadovich, and I, he, he makes me give a pick every week. So I wanted to use Green Bay, but the contest number was three. And I, so I used, instead of Green Bay, I used San Francisco. Ooh. And the other team that I really liked, you know who that was? I really liked the Jets. So no matter, yeah, no matter what I did, Oof. I was. Well, I had the Vikings. Yeah, I was just done. And they looked really good in the first quarter. Yeah. And I had the Bucks, and they looked really good in the first quarter. So you, you, so you went to you went to the game on Monday night, and you yes. bet on the Buccaneers, and you lost uh, a significant amount of money on that game. I went a lot. Not a significant amount. I think the the reality is, I bet significantly more on college football okay. than I do NFL, and that's because I can find an edge and had some nice outright underdog winners. On uh, you know, and in. in uh, in college football and look the nfl is just a really tough market to beat i thought i had a a, a good edge 
enough that I could bet the Bucks at home with their defense. And then uh, Chris Godwin got hurt. Mike Evans got hurt. Baker Mayfield threw two interceptions. I mean, at the end of the third quarter, when Jeff was like, hey, should we get on the party bus so we can beat traffic? And Ariel's like, what do you mean I'm thoroughly enjoying this? I'm like, yes, let's go to the casino so I can win my money back. You yeah. left the game? Yeah. What about Ariel? She's a Ravens fan. She was fine. She was happy to have the end result there. Uh, you don't need to go to the. You didn't need to go to the casino to get your money back. You could just start a meme coin, Kelly. What were you? You're going to the casino to get? Can your you money imagine back? if if I had that meme coin? People, I mean, people love to witch hunt me already, and I maybe I make it easy to hate me. I don't know because I'm such an alpha asshole. But like God, I I'm watching all this shit unfold, and I'm going, I don't know enough about regulations i don't know enough about securities i mean i got a little ethereum from john murray told me to buy some whatever year that was 2018 way up since then yeah i've well, sold some of it since then because i had to pay a couple people you know sometimes those things sometimes you have a bad weekend it's easier to ship off some bitcoin but i yeah. Overall, I don't have it's not a huge investment for me, so I don't really pay attention. Like, I'm kind of a gold and silver and real estate girl, which is great because Brett's like an XRP guy. So, I feel like at least within this couple, them we've got some differentiating, you know, investments. But, like, these shit coins make no sense to me. And the very first time I saw it, I was like, this is going to end badly. And here we are. Is couple them a word? Coupled, coupled them. I thought you said in this couple them. Is that a word? Maybe. Maybe I just made it up. No, I don't know. So Brett's a Brett's more XRP than like Bitcoin or Bitcoin. Yeah, he's got some Bitcoin, but I don't know why. He's been in love with XRP for a while. He keeps thinking that they are gonna be, you know, be the first one to, you know, have the SEC let them be a thing. It, it's such a weird mess because just like anything else, like here's me politically, John Murray saying, No, I don't want rules, I want less regulations, don't tell me how to live my life. And then I see things like this unfold and I'm like, or like we see the idiot Senator, like shoot the shoot five, five, six at 15 yards and uh, a shrapnel piece of the steel or the bullet fragment hits a reporter. And I'm like, yes, we should have more rules. What the fuck is going on? So it's been a really interesting week for me politically. Well, there's a lot of stupid people out there and stupid people, rules, for, rules for stupid people, not for KIV. Yeah. Well, that's, that's don't, my don't, put the, don't put the joke on the platter like that for me, okay? Don't make it too easy for me. The book, the book didn't do that bad this weekend. You'd think it would have been worse because there was so much chalk, but we got lucky. We had, we had a lot of money on Miami at plus three and a half, and they ended up Indianapolis kicked a field goal to win by six. Yeah, Indianapolis is four and three somehow, which is amazing because the whole team is injured. That guy is just such a good coach. He really and is. He's such a good coach. So, and then Green Bay, which I mentioned was probably my favorite pick on Sunday. They that was won rough. the game, but they did not cover. And then the Raiders game in the afternoon, we needed the Raiders to cover big time. They were down by eight. So, so picture me. I'm sitting here. This, I've got this the Rams. made no sense except for you, you guys. It made sense I, for yeah, you guys. I know. I've got the Rams in Splash Sports Survivor with Kelly as my partner. And I need the Raiders to cover for the book. It's it was twenty to twelve. Is that right? So it was only twenty oh to twelve God. because the Rams on the previous possession had missed a thirty-five yard field goal. They doinked it off the post. Raiders get the ball back. They go all the way down the Wait, field. Did they miss a field goal or a PAT? They missed both. They Sorry, missed... I, by that point I had had a lot well, of you. No, no, no. That's a good no. That's a good call out by you. It would have been twenty-one to six, but they missed an extra point. Then later in the game, when it was 20 to 12, they got down there. They got stopped. It's like three minutes left in the game. Okay, no worries. You make this field goal, you're up by 11. The game's over. Doink. So the Raiders go down the field. They've got a fourth and goal at the four-yard line. Okay, when that when that field goal was kicked, there wasn't three minutes left in the game. There, it, was, it was late in the fourth quarter. Then the Raiders go down the field. It's fourth and goal, like four. They're going to go for it, down 20 to 12. False start. Now it's fourth and goal at the nine, and they send in the field goal unit. So I'm sitting here. I've got I got Splash Survivor I'm texting Kelly about. I'm rooting for the Raiders for the book. The only explanation, I sent in the field goal unit. Isn't that what, the, <laughs> isn't that what all the people – I mean, 
that, yeah. That's yeah. a very yeah. nice middle yeah. for you, John Murray. I'm very proud of you yeah, and it, happy it, it for you. Hilarious. And it was great for the book. So the, the afternoon we did okay. We didn't, I'm not saying we did well, but the results were so bad. I had media contacts of mine like, oh my God, was, was today as bad as last Sunday? Because, you know, the previous Sunday, all the books got killed. Well, in theory, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't I, that bad. I could have seen it being as bad only because of all the favorites coming through, mm -hmm. even though a couple of them didn't cover. I was like, oh, another bad week. But I didn't hear any like local bookies that I know bitching and complaining like they had the week before. That's usually like how I know how bad it's been is like, you know, some guy being like, hey, I got to I got to I got to bump you off to next week. We're going to roll this. And it's like that well, bad. Gotta, it's important for people to understand. You got to get a couple of the afternoon games because usually there, there's let's call it seven to ten morning games and then three to five afternoon games. You've got a lot, you've got so much handle concentrated into those three, four, or five games in the afternoon. So if they all go south, uh, you're you just get carried out. You go back to week, I guess week seven. There was four afternoon games, and the favorites went four zero, and all four games went over the total. And then it rolled into Sunday night football, Bengals at the Giants. That game did stay under, but the Bengals covered. They won by ten. So you, you get all that like parlay liability just keeps rolling and rolling and you get killed. We did win a couple of the afternoon games. For some reason, everybody agreed with me and bet the 49ers on Sunday. And they got taken out. Like, and that's what kind of concerns me this week is yeah. I feel like all those same people are going to want to be on the Cowboys. Well, we'll get into that. We'll get, do you want to, do you want to do college stuff or pro stuff first? I want to do, do survivor college. first. I th okay. So survivor. I know our is, audience loves talking about it so much. It's hard. I think people need to understand it's hard for us not to because we're, and it's, what is this, week eight? Yes. And we're, we're still alive in two big survivor contests that started before the season. Because I know there's all these people that are in like rebuy contests. We're in two big full season contests. So, of course, we're going to talk about it. See, and for me, it's like a little bit different because I chopped my one and then we're playing for the remaining balance right now. So I feel like I'm kind of just like, hey, this is okay. We're cruising. No big deal. Whereas everybody else, I mean, I bought in for a little bit more uh, on Splash. I said, all right, fine. Instead of trying to hedge, I'm going to do their revival. There was a significant overlay. I think it was like another uh, like 12 or 15 grand. So anytime I find those, I feel like they're a little advantageous. So I, I joined five in those and all five made it through last week because I used those same three yeah, favorites we talked about. As you well as two like jacks. Every option one last week. That's the weird thing about the, the last two weeks have been everyone's surviving. So the question becomes, who did you use? That's that's your advantage. Like, I think it was good that we didn't use Green Bay two weeks ago. I'm glad we didn't use Green Bay because I think we're going to want them later in the season. Yeah, but when? That's the problem. I see them. Well, that's, like the, well, that's the million dollar question I'm about to answer. So we think. Kelly and I think Denver is going to be the most pick in Circa, right? Is that fair? Yes. They are. And, and now, of course, having said that, we both were wrong last week. We both thought the Redskins were going to be the most picked last week. So we could be wrong about that. But we think Denver is going to be the most picked. So the question is, do we use the Lions, who are the biggest favorite of the year in the NFL? This is the most any team has been favored by all season. And it's the most they'll be favored by all season. Do we use them now? And then we're boxed into either the aforementioned Packers or the Cowboys on Thanksgiving because we already used Kansas City. So that's the question we have to ask ourselves. And then, and then of course, we root for the Saints Chaos. from Carolina in the afternoon, right? And that's, I, that's an option. And as, as a Broncos fan, I kind of feel like that's the move. Let me look at one thing I wanted to show you. Like the more the more I see of this week, I kind of feel like it is too, because, because I think, but I think that the, the most picked teams are going to be Denver and the Chargers, because people are saving Baltimore, people are saving Kansas City, and people are saving the Lions for Thanksgiving. And then if we do this, what else are we rooting for? Assuming we're still alive, we become big Bears fans on Thanksgiving morning. Because you know a lot of people are going to use the Lions on Thanksgiving. We'll have already used them. So that, that's the that's the strategy involved there. I don't know. I don't even know if it's the right thing to do. I, 
so I sent you guys this. It's Josh sure. Reynolds. And while albeit he's not a I don't know who that is. But I don't okay, he's a Broncos point. wide receiver. He's not that important to the team. Got shot at a strip club, which <laughs> makes me kind of concerned. Like, hey, remember when the when Von Miller was there and he was throwing parties and Chad Kelly was like going into random people's houses and like vacuuming and weird shit? When you kind of lose no, control of the remember. locker room, I don't I don't remember that. Honestly. You don't remember the Von Miller party? Okay. I don't remember that Chad Kelly was going into people's homes and vacuuming. He got arrested because he went into some chick's home high on God knows whatever and was cleaning, and she walked in and was like, "Hi, get the fuck out of here!" and called the cops. Well, all I'm saying is that it, it kind of is like there's Denver, they're rocking and rolling. This is a great spot to use them. But early in the season, I said, I think we can go all year long without using the Broncos. Mm -hmm. And well, I understand why we'd want to use them, but boy, would I be pissed if we didn't use Detroit, who we say that we don't want to use on Thanksgiving. If we, and that, and we were in the same position last year, if you remember. Dallas, now we were wrong about this, but Dallas was a huge favorite. I think they were playing the Giants, and they were a huge favorite. And you and I talked, and we both agreed that we didn't want to use Dallas on Thanksgiving. Do you remember this conversation? Yes. Dallas was playing the Redskins on Thanksgiving. We said to each other, we don't want to use Dallas on Thanksgiving, and they're a massive favorite against the Giants. They killed the Giants in that game. It was one of our easiest wins of the year. But it burned Dallas for Thanksgiving. Then we had to use Detroit, and they lost. And that's how we got knocked out. But it's the exact same situation where if we say we're not going to use Detroit on Thanksgiving, then we should use them on Sunday because they are the biggest favorite of the whole year in the NFL. And I think that's my biggest issue. I was just looking back in our thread, John, and here's the reality. You were, looking, I... you were reading text messages while I was talking instead of listening to me? Yes, I was also listening to you, but the, the, here's the thing. I told Sammy P this th on this morning Oops, uh, with him and Joe O. He's like, well, John says you throw five different things out there every single week. And I said, no, no, no. I'm, talking through, I said more than I'm talking through them because I felt like I wasn't vocal enough about the Seattle pick. And so now I'm going to be like overly vocal. And last week, your boy, who you guys are both Redskins fans, Joff <laughs> said he did not like using the Redskins. And that's kind of how I feel about the Broncos this week. I, I understand why everybody would want to use them. It makes a lot of sense. I'm not saying that the Chargers really, you know, get me too excited either. But I, I really do feel like sometimes you do have to zig when others zag. And if I get to cheer for Pittsburgh losing to the Giants on Monday night, Denver losing to the Panthers. Well, that's so that's exactly – that's the whole plan of this is we use, if we use Detroit, then we were zigging while others are zagging. We, we are banking on other people are saving Detroit for Thanksgiving and they are using Denver and they are using the chargers. And I will and be a huge hope, Bears fan on Thanksgiving. And we are going to hope. And, and, yeah. And that too. And we're going to hope that one of those teams loses in the afternoon. That's the whole idea. Or maybe both of them lose. I don't know. I, that seems pretty unlikely, but we, that's the, that's the plan behind it. And then we feel like right or wrong, we still would have two viable options on Thanksgiving, Dallas at home against New York or Green Bay at home against Miami. We would still have two. We wouldn't be totally effed on Thanksgiving if we did this. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we're going to use Green Bay. I think we're pretty much stuck with Dallas, which is not so let's great. See, let's see if, uh, I mean, what if Tua gets knocked out in the first quarter of this game on Sunday? I mean, let's be honest. This guy, Thanksgiving is still a month away. That's a, that's a lot of knocks to Tua's head between now and Thanksgiving Day. I'm not wishing that on Tua. I right. actually like Tua. But the guy gets hurt a lot. And if he's not playing on Thanksgiving night, Miami is going to get blown out by the Tigers. Probably. Probably. You and, do... you know, Jordan Love is not exactly, you know, super healthy right now either. Oh. I don't know. I kind of – I we may end up regretting it, but I there's something I don't love about this Chargers team uh, against the Saints. Is it going to be Spencer Rattler again? Is that what we're hearing? Yeah, I mean, I think if it is Rattler, God, man, it's, hard, it's so hard not to use the Chargers. I mean, the only reason I would say not to use the Chargers against Rattler is because I think a lot of people are going to use the Chargers. And like you're saying, zig when others zag. 
the last two weeks we've advanced, but we haven't really, we haven't really. So it doesn't really do anything for us. So the only way that we can really progress in this contest is to take a team that not everybody else is taking and have the team everybody else is taking lose. So right. that, that's and kind of the, that's the idea behind the Lions play. I also think, I mean, look, I'm looking right now, it, I think Olave's out. I haven't seen anything definitive. We know he's banged up. Uh, their other wide receiver, forget his name, I think he's having surgery. He's out for the year. He's out for the year. Okay. Uh, look, whether it's Derek Carr, Taysom Hill, or Spencer Rattler, I'm not actually really sure it matters that much, but we know Derek Carr is not going to be back. Right now, I think everybody's just betting against the same crappy teams. And it, it's very apparent where Tennessee's at by saying, like, all right, here's – just take them. Take whoever you want. We don't care anymore. Yeah. Well, it's – there's something to be said, too, and then we'll move on from Survivor. But there's something to be said, too, about using Detroit right now while they're riding high. You look, A few weeks ago, New Orleans was considered a hot team. Yeah. A few it started weeks off the season ago, very hot. A few weeks ago, San Francisco was considered a hot team. I'm glad we used San Francisco when we did yeah. because now they look like a mess. And the New York Jets, we've used them before their wheels fell off. So there's something to be said for like, okay, the Lions are Philadelphia. awesome. Maybe we use them now. I feel pretty confident that the Lions are going to beat the Titans. Kelly mentioned that the Titans are trading linebackers. They're, you know, they're looking to the future. Yeah, it, it definitely looks like they're having a, a yard sale of players right now, right? Which kind of tells me that, they're not in it to win it. And and if they can go into Detroit, who I think is the best team, I mean, this is not exactly me going out on a win, the best team in the NFC, and they go into Detroit and beat them with, with what they have, I mean, then we'll just deserve to lose. What about uh, – Listen, if the Titans go into Detroit and win, then so be it. College football, don't, you don't have the marquee matchups we had the last couple of weeks in college football this weekend. I don't think it's – like a super, super car, but I can't run you through a bunch of sharp plays I saw. Friday night, Louisville minus seven at Boston College. So this one, I only noted it because I, I want to brag about the fact that I'm going to the game. Boise State, UNLV. They 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 took three and a half. They laid three. I don't even know which group I respect more. These are sharp groups. Be careful with that game. Be careful with the Boise State. It's going to be a cool game. Saturday, they keep laying Notre Dame. They just keep this. They keep laying this number on Notre Dame. Notre Dame is not. This is not a road game for the Fighting Irish. This game is in East Rutherford, New Jersey. The neutral Bet field, life, right? Yeah, it's a neutral field. Notre Dame, Navy, both teams under. Or no, Notre Dame should be undefeated. They're not. Navy undefeated. Notre Dame has been playing pretty well lately. They're pretty solid on defense, but Navy's looked awesome. That line keeps getting bet up. Saturday, Baylor. They laid four, and they laid four Ooh. and a half against Oklahoma State. They took LSU plus two and a half at Texas A&M. I like took, LSU this week. You ready for this one? West Virginia. Oh, boy. Plus three and a half. They are playing at Arizona Saturday night. I'd love to go to that game. I can't. You know why? Because Jay Cornegay's daughter is getting married. Jay is going to be off all weekend, so I'll be here holding down the shop. It's a tough life. I mean, you know, last week I saw pa Patrick Everson's daughter yeah. got married on a Saturday, and it took every bone in my body not to be like, why do – like, Jay, Jay, Patrick, like, who are these men in sports that are allowing their daughters to have these football season so, weddings? Let me tell a funny Jay story because we – the rehearsal dinner is obviously tomorrow night, right? And it's at a, it's at a country club in town, and he's like, I, I played this golf course once in my life. And he's like, do you remember the, the TV setup at the bar? Because I want to watch the UNLV game. I'm like, Jay, no, I don't remember the, the TV setup at a bar from a country club I've been to once in my life. No, I do not. He was kidding. But UNLV Boise State is a big game. If you tell me which, which country club it is, I can probably remember what the bar that the TV setup looks I will, like. I'll, I'll tell you about it. I'll text it to you. Do you want to tell? You, oh, you don't want anybody to know in case they go crash, wedding crash, ah, Jay Cornegay's daughter's wedding reception. There's a business. If I say there's, it's a country club in Vegas, that, there's a million of those. That doesn't there is a million of those. That doesn't help you much. So do uh, you want to do your, your, uh, your hottie threesome or the, the chuckle ham? Rum the wrong ham, Mizzou, was not very happy about it. I sent uh, – so I record the video. I do bet on it. I record the video. 
I send it over to JH. I run to my mom's house. It's not even three hours later. And he sends me a tweet from a beat writer. It says Brady Cook is uh, doubtful. I'm like, oh, fuck me running. Like, what what world do I live in now, right? Uh, I'd like to be able to trust Wednesday injury reports, but apparently that's just not the case. So I actually... Well, hey, you know, let, me, let me tell you this. I One thing that shocked me last week in college football, you talk about injury reports, the way they bet Georgia Tech against Notre Dame, I would have bet you anything that Haynes King was going to play. It was our, it was like our best information groups for betting Georgia Tech, and then, and then we got obviously found out later on that he didn't, he wasn't going to play. So sometimes even the best people get that wrong. I'm just telling. You. And, and I think that they might listen. They shooted him up a little bit last the week. Patrick and half got him up. Yeah, like Patrick Mahomes, sure. and uh, he went out there and won the game for him. So we'll see. I think he, I think he's more. 60 40 than they're saying at least that's what my intel from columbia is saying uh you got people being... in columbia missouri i do oh no no that okay. i have a friend that is uh that is i i'm not gonna boots say it okay huh? boots on the ground in columbia i'll i'll take i'll i'll send you okay I, i've already asked too many questions go ahead i'm sorry i just wanted to know how hard he was so, so Missouri, Missouri is the is the rum ham. Missouri right now at the Westgate is plus seventeen. They're at Alabama. Yes, yeah, so I did take a little bit of seventeen and a half just to double down degenerate style, just a little extra, just in case the game lands between fourteen and seventeen, and I get really mad. Uh, but I do think Mizzou is gonna. I think they're gonna come to play specifically on defense. Uh, then my parlay, which I'm not happy to hear about, the sharp groups laying it, laying it with Baylor. I like text. Oh, excuse me. No, I liked Oklahoma State. Yeah. I am on North Texas over Tulane, Texas Tech over TCU, and Washington over Indiana. So we need we need Washington. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you reminded me of that. So uh, we need we really need Washington. Um, we don't do well if Indiana makes it to the college football playoff. Oh boy, there's that many people betting this team because I sure as hell didn't see them coming. We will not do well if Indiana makes the college football playoff. So that the only reason that I would watch a Indiana, wow, Indiana Washington game is that game that's the game. I would never. Watch uh, it. Game day is going to be there. Oh, I know it is. College game day. Will that's be there. crazy. Uh, I will unfortunately have to watch that. Hoping Could you watch. imagine if K KU was good? Maybe game day would be in Manhattan, Kansas. Probably still not, but well, maybe. You're, that's a shot. Uh, you're going to you're going to go to the game on Saturday. That game. Yeah, Ariel and I are going to go. Ariel's going too. Yeah, first time in Kansas. I'm excited for it. it's going to be beautiful. I guess my aunt was saying it's really nice week. So is that if I'm reading between the lines and reading the tea leaves here, you did not get a ticket for Andy Samuelson in this game. So no, I did not because they're like five hundred dollars, and in my section they're even more. And I only asked the I only asked the university for two field passes, so I can't. Kelly, we already talked about this. Create a meme coin. Get Andy on the field. He's a good friend of ours. Oh. All right. Tell me oh. your NFL biggest needs. We got to get to the mailbag. NFL. So tonight's game, it's funny. It's so out of like out of the norm. We this has happened two weeks in a row. Last week we really needed Denver hmm. and they smoked New Orleans. And this week we really need Minnesota. So very strange. Two consecutive weeks, Thursday night football. You've had this road favorite of like a field goal-ish, almost round three. You were right but back texting my group of we friends. We Minnesota pretty big tonight. They play at the Rams. I get it. It's a it's a bad spot for Minnesota. That was a really emotional game against Detroit on Sunday, a game that maybe they should have won. They did not win the game. Now they have to go to L.A. in a short week. I, 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 I get it, I, but the money is definitely on the Rams. Sunday, sharp stuff, Cleveland. Plus nine against Baltimore. Cleveland. I can going see to James, like the Browns. They got a real quarterback now. They got James Winston playing quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. Jacksonville. I can't bet Jacksonville. You know, I, I just can't. I can't do it. Jacksonville plus four and a half against Green Bay. I touched on this earlier. Dallas plus four and a half at the 49ers. That's Sunday night football. And the last one, I could never bring myself to bet this. New York against Pittsburgh. They took six and a half. I bet against Pittsburgh, I think, the last several weeks. I've lost every freaking time. 
I don't know. The Giants are just one of those stupid teams that are going to win every once in a while. Like, I, I don't really want to use them ever, but. The one thing is this. And I, I did a podcast this morning with, with, with the Bear, Chris Felica, Jeff Schwartz, Will Hill, and Jason. Jeff Schwartz made a good point. The Giants' offensive line is so banged up right now. Andrew Thomas is out for the season. What are they going to be able to do to keep T.J. Watt and the rest of those guys at bay? Jeff mentioned he liked under 14.5 points for the Giants in that game. What can they do offensively against that? I don't know. We'll see. Because Kelly and I, we'll we'll do the mailbag and we'll let Survivor stuff end. But you and I have talked about using – the Steelers in the splash contest, have we not? Because in the remember in the splash contest, you've got to win 25 games. So you're probably not going to get to 25 without using Pittsburgh. So we, we have discussed that. I don't know if we will. Well, I don't know if we will. My give mom, me your, give me your best bet, and then we'll do the mail bet. I don't have a best bet necessarily. Oh, I gave out I gave out the Colts was five and a half. I like that. Um, I like that pick. I think that for a while, five and a half was one of the sharpest lines this year. I didn't love anything this week. I tried. I tried to make a case for the Raiders as a double-digit dog uh, to the Chiefs scheduling-wise. Uh, you could get ten and a half. I like the Cowboys. It's yeah. kind of hard when you do a lot of media stuff and like you're the host. So I host the NFL show. So like I have to let everybody else submit their stuff, yeah. and then I like fill in where I I can. So we're already talking about the primetime games and these other guys are, you know, giving out their best bets. So it's like, all right, I'm telling you, I haven't been doing very well in the NFL. I've been so focused on survivor. I really just haven't really been loving anything. I mean, I did play the, I did like the Vikings a lot last week, but here we are. I I liked Green Bay a lot last week. Look, I liked San Francisco. I really thought they were going to, that was, that was, I know not good. I was only, again, I was, only catching glimpses of it. It was on with the with the Rams game. We were playing darts at the bar, the Viva bar. We were having a great time. But it was like every time I looked up, there was Patrick Mahomes in the red zone. I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, my. I was I was way off base last week in the NFL. I, I was just uh, the reason why that's the reason why I have to work, Kelly. Why I, I, I work every day. Because I that's why you gotta work in the NFL. Okay. All right, wise guy wager on X says, with this being the first year of a 12-team playoff, do you expect a much higher volume wagered on these games? That's a good question. The answer is definitely. So what, one thing we've seen over the last, what has it been, three or four years with the transfer portal, with guys sitting out for the draft, is we've come down to where there's only a few bowl games a year that are consequential that we know both teams are trying in. Now we get a minimum of 11 of those games. And I think it's going to be huge for our handle in December and January. I think it's going to be awesome. I can't, I can't wait for the college football playoff. I think it's I going to be awesome. 60, I would do a 64-team playoff kit. I would do – why not? Who's complaining? March Madness. Who's Instead complaining? of bowl games, it'd be so much more fun than bowl games. It'd be way better than bowl games. It'd be way better. You're right. But then you could still <laughs> play them at the different bowl sites, but, like – It'd be way better. You could have like you could have games like going on at the same time, like we do in the basketball tournament. That'd be awesome. I think it would be awesome. I <laughs> agree with you. Good. Okay, Vincent PGH wants to know: Will the handle for UFC 308 be affected by being an early pay per view? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I, I think it'll be. It's a little bit earlier in the day. I think the pay per view card starts at two. Don't hold me to that. But it, it's earlier in the day. It's a very very good event, but. Over, you know, over in the Middle East, I, I think it will affect it that it's there's a lot going on in the middle of the day on a Saturday with all the college football games. I, I do think it'll be bad for business. All right, I'm just going to skip to number six at BFPSU third one two three on X says any sharp action on UFC 308, and does JM have an opinion on Taporia versus Max Holloway or any of the other fights? No, I don't. You know, I don't. I mean, I God, I. I, I how could you lay minus 250 with Taporia against Max? I I don't know. I mean, I priced the way he's going to win the fight, but I, I I don't. I think that one looks good. Uh, that price is too much for me to lay, is what I should say. I haven't really seen any sharp action on the card. I mean, the, the, I think there's a lot of people on this card that maybe the casual betters don't really know who they are. I, mean, I know it's some of the really top fighters. And 
the, the Chimaya uh, Robert Whitaker fight should be an awesome fight, but there, there hasn't been a ton of action on these cards. The sports calendar is so busy right now. There's so much going on. We haven't even talked about this. The World Series starts tomorrow night. Oh, the yeah. N I forgot all about baseball. The NBA started on Tuesday night. Brian yeah, but Brown. everybody's already opting out. Like, I was over there bitching about the Brady Cook news, and I'm like, guess it could be worse. Who opts out on night one? The 76ers do. Bronny James went for zero points against the, against the, the I don't even know who they played, Timberwolves. Uh, the NHL is underway. So, you know, our best bet UFC card ever was the first ever Fight Island card in the summer of 2020 when I think it was Masvidal against Kamaru Usman was the main event. And it was because there was nothing else going on in the world, literally, because all the other sports leagues were not playing at the time. So we, this UFC, it's a great card, but it's going up against so much stuff. It's not getting the betting action I would expect for a pay-per-view. All right. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. At BJG for Bob on X says, is plus three and a half to three less consequential than three to two and a half? Uh I don't know if I understand what he means by that. So, like, when an NFL game goes from three to three and a half, right? Or from oh, two and a half less to three. Of a move, like, less significant of a move? Yeah, which is – I think he's asking which is more significant or which is more respected or which is a bigger deal. I, I'd have to say three to two and a half, but there's – I would agree with that. Maybe there's some math nerd that could prove me wrong about yes, that. Yes, math nerds in the comment section, please let us know. I think it's three to two and a half, but uh, there's probably some some guy like a Kelly like nerd that can like show me how I'm wrong about that. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with that. All right, JC Wilcox, twenty three, overwhelmingly massive fan here. John Murray is a true star. Kevy, what's the better outcome for the game? The number one K State personality at King Joel underscore three wins his money, or KU fan Andy Sandman gets to come on the show. Seems like a win win. That'd be great if we had Andy on the show. I don't know who this JC Wilcox. We can't have about. Andy on the show. I'm what? already unfiltered enough. Yeah, Andy. <laughs> if you saw the political commentary. From Andy Samuelson, you would be mortified. You would be more. You'd put your phone down. I don't know. I don't know how to answer this guy's question. I I hope he has fun at the game on Saturday. I don't, I don't think it's a question. I think it's more of a statement. I think he's what, just like making yeah. a statement. What is the? What is that thread where like you made a bet with some guy on the internet about? Okay, so in December, in December, there's a KU guy that I worked with at Bleacher Report. His name's Bryson. And he and Vern worked at Bleacher Report with me back in the day. And he's going on and on and on about, about how he is so sure that K the University of Kansas is going to win at Kansas State. Okay. That yes, he's willing to pay five to one. What? Yes. And I said, listen to what you're saying. And so I DM Joel. I said, Joel, accept that bet. I'll put up the thousand dollars. We'll split the twenty five hundred dollars in proceeds. He said, "But what if we lose?" And this is back in December of twenty twenty three, mind you. And I said, "Even if we don't lose, we are going to guarantee ourselves money." I go, "Let's say Casey, it's a three point favorite. We put a thousand dollars on the other side. We cannot lose money, right? Yeah. Like if, Casey, if oh. Casey, it's a three point favorite, we take KU plus one fifty. We're guaranteeing ourselves money. So now that why KU is two and five, make, why did this guy want to make this bet with you? Who is this guy?" Yeah, I told him on Twitter. I said, you're bad at math. If anything, I've proven to anybody you are bad. You do not. You can put your money where your mouth is. But if you go around telling people you're going to lay five to freaking one on a team that you know is going to be an underdog in Manhattan, Kansas, because you got gaslit by ESPN FBI, I can't help you. Yeah, that that was not a good decision by that young man. So are right, you but gonna... that's what I wrote Joel. And like, cause, cause he was rousing Joel about, oh, you're broke. And Joel's like, I don't have the money. I said, Joel, you don't need the money. A, it's based on credit. And B, you can bet the other side and guarantee yourself money. We're not going to bet the other side. We're going to let it ride. But right. worst case, we lose $1,000. Best case, we win five grand. So the plan is you're going to let it ride. You're the plan is case you better win by 21. You're going to risk it. And if, KU wins, you'll finally do the meme coin. Yeah, there we go. I'll do the shit coin. Okay, so at FFNG Sports on X says, who has more of an impact on the final score in the NFL? Incompetent officials or brain dead coaches? <laughs> it's it's the coaches. It's the it's the coach the coaches, they 
they don't understand the fourth down situations. They don't understand the when they should kick, when they should punt, when they should. They have all this money and all these math nerds you know, that can tell them, right? The coaches, but where where do the incompetent officials decide more games? Apparently, the WNBA. It turns out I didn't know that the WNBA was like. You remember when we were when we were younger, in the nineties, that David Stern NBA. They would not let the Bulls lose some of those teams in the Eastern Conference. That was not going to happen with Jordan. And then later yeah, on, that guy, that guy lives down here. Uh, what's that referee's name? He lives down here. I saw him Netflix. Tim Donaghy. And yeah, then, I'm like you know, waving to see him like out of the bar. Well, the early 2000s when when Shaq and Kobe were with the Lakers, Jordan's retired, so now it's all about the Lakers. And they would simply not let the Lakers lose. They were not going to lose to the Kings. They just wasn't going to happen. So uh, the Trailblazers. So now it's the WNBA where apparently the Liberty are the Jordan Bulls or the Lakers. Yeah, did you see highlights from their parade? No, I did not, actually. Oh, that's because there were none. Uh, at Kill uh, 22 on X. Did anyone dabble on Kennesaw State Moneyline as a 27 and a half point dog last night? No, but I did see some tickets floating around social media this morning. So shout out to whoever was brave enough to put down seven grand on Kennesaw State Moneyline. I'm hoping it was maybe like a donor or something. Did we – did that – was that game in the Splash Sports College contest? Probably. No, of course not. So, you know what? I got to – I want to talk about that. You about you this morning on the show. When when Sammy and Joe were like, hey, there's going to be a lot of us at the end, I'm like, yeah, but conference weekend, people are going to not have any plays left. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. But I said, you know, John Murray and I should have made it harder. Well, well let's talk about that because our original proposal was you do the regular season – and then we would do the first round of the playoff, a quarterfinal, a semifinal, and then the title game. That's what we proposed. We thought maybe nobody would make it to the end if we did that, right? That that was a little complicated. I think the double pick weeks is the way to go. And, well, and opening it up to some of these smaller conferences after I said not to. Having said that, I am shocked at how few upsets there are. I mean, I, I knew that the way we set it up would be – I knew – I figured a lot of people would make it to the end. But I – had no idea how few and far between upsets would be. And it's shocking to me. Like half the people are still alive. It's crazy. When is there going to be a significant college football upset? Maybe it'll be on Saturday too. Maybe. See you next All right, week. John Murray. Should we do a Halloween episode next week? Should we dress up? Um, no, I don't think so. But I am, I am going to do the wager talk show with you on Sunday. And I'm planning to bring in my... So, is now a bad time to tell you that I'm going to be too hungover and I ask someone to fill in for me on Sunday? Oh, then I saw... Do I have to do it? If you could at least just send me your needs, you don't have to do it. But if you could, like, send me your formal, like, here's what the Westgate needs, no. I, I won't force you to come on the show if I'm not going to be there. Done. I can do that. It's easy. Just remind me. Bye.